Phyllis, do you know me? No, sir, I do not know you, except that you are a most eminent man. <laughs> On that, thank you for saying that, although there are some even in this room who might disagree with you. Allow me to suggest that I am somewhat of a scholar of English literature, including poetry. I'm a great admirer of John Donne and John Milton, besides Alexander Pope, to name a few. Uh, Phyllis, have you read any of these authors? Oh, yes, sir. Which one? Sir, I have read them all. Oh, all of them? Well, pray tell. Tell us what it is that you like about all of these authors. Excuse me, sir. That is all right. You may take your time. I have asked what it is that she admires about all of these authors. Perhaps that is too broad a way of asking the question. What is it that you admire most about, say, John Milton? Oh, John Milton. His greatest work was Paradise Lost. That is very good, Phyllis. But let me ask you, do you know what an atheist is? Yes, Mr. Green. An atheist is one who does not believe in God. Yes. But what are your views on atheists? I have written a poem about atheists. By all means, recite them. Now tell what curses unbelief doth yield. Thou that dost daily feed his head and rod and dare deny the essence of a god? If there is no god, from whence did all things spring? He made the greatest and minutest things. If there is no heaven, from whence, whither wilt thou go? Make thy Elysium in the shades below. <laughs> That's the best example I've ever heard of a set of atheism as a direct result of a bright reason. <laughs> Indeed, he must be, for some might say that in her work there is too much hope and not enough wheat. Oh, 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 Rhymes, doesn't it? Like a couplet. I'm not sure I understand, sir. The issue at hand is not whether your work is imitated, but rather whether your work is indeed your work. You see, we in this room have never beheld a person such as yourself. <coughs> you mean of my race. You must understand that you are the first person of your race that we have ever seen who lays claim to writing poetry. No, more than that, who lays claim to writing poetry like the great poets of the English language. You must realize that for the 150 years since the founding of this country, we have seen the people of your race arrive on these shores from Africa as you did with other slaves in one of Mr. Timothy Fitch's slave ships. <laughs> but they do not read like you, let alone write. This is our experience. This is what we all, save a few souls such as the Wheatley family, have ever seen of your race. 